Let's bring you the update for the time. The Taliban has declared war in Afghanistan over after its fighters swept into the capital Kabul and President Ashraf Ghani fled the country. The streets of Kabul were quiet on Monday, but there were scenes of chaos and panic at the international airport as hundreds of Afghans desperate to leave the country flooded the tarmac. The United States and other Western nations were also scrambling to evacuate their diplomats and citizens. A spokesman for Taliban's political office said that the type and form of the new government in Afghanistan will be made clear soon. The past few hours have been tense in Plateau State following the killing of 22 travelers in the capital, Jos. Governor Samuel Lalong imposed a 24-hour curfew uh, in the three councils area of the state, including Jos North. The military have also arrested 21 suspects in connection with the, what the president terms a brazen and wickedly motivated attack on members of the community exercising their rights to travel freely. The tension in the city of Jos is also hampering educational activities in some schools. Our correspondent Funam Joshua has the story. Killings and counter killings being perpetrated by lawbreakers in Plato State has become a thing of serious concern and worry. More than 50 people are confirmed to have lost their lives in the state just within 14 days. And all efforts to put an end to these dastardly acts seems not yielding positive results at the moment. The killing of 25 commuters Saturday morning along the Kubarod community, a suburb of just the state capital, has received wide condemnation across the country. The aftermath of the Saturday killings had resulted in the imposition of 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew, first in three council areas of the state, which include just north, just south, and then Basa. Despite the 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew imposed Saturday evening by the state government, some angry youths refused to obey the order. Instead, they took to the street Sunday morning blocking major roads within the city metropolis again attacking innocent passers-by in reprisal to Saturday's attack. The state government, in order to avert a further escalation of the situation, quickly imposed a 24-hour curfew, restricting this to just not local government area, where the activities of the irate youths pose a serious threat to the people. Leaders of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Plato State Chapter, and that of the Jamaatu Nasrul Islam in the state, condemn the action and call on all Plateau State residents to let go their differences and coexist together for the sake of peace. What has happened, actually, no reasonable or sensible human being will be happy what has happened. It is, it is, it is terrible, and nobody is happy about this, and the church condemns it in Tutu. Although calm has been restored in the affected areas, following the efforts of the joint security operatives, most streets within the city metropolis are deserted by residents for fear of the unknown. The Special Task Force Operation Safe Haven in a press statement asserted that 21 persons have been arrested and taken into custody in connection with the killing of the 25 commuters. 36 of the commuters who were earlier declared missing following the attack have been rescued by through the efforts of the operatives of Operation Safe Haven. A few residents who agreed to talk to our crew on camera say they are not happy with the situation in the state. I want to join all other uh, meaningful citizens of Plateau State to condemn this very particular act and to call on Plateau uh, State that we should live in peace with one another. Whenever the slightest issue comes up, instead of us to resolve the issue as brothers and sisters, we go into crisis. That is very, very bad. We should stop. The issue of uh, Muslim, uh, Christian, uh, religion stuff. We should look at ourselves as brothers and sisters so that we move this nation to the greater height. Many have commended the state government's timely imposition of the curfew. Mischief makers bent on disrupting the peace and joy in the state are warned to desist as anyone caught will be decisively dealt with. Phnom Joshua, TVC News. The third wave of the coronavirus pandemic is having a major impact on the health care system in Nigeria, with isolation centers already recording a high number of patients. In this report by TVC News senior correspondent Sharon Ijaso, experts reiterate the need for people to be more responsible as the third wave hits harder. 
Africa's fragile health system is a source of concern as COVID-19 pandemic spreads more. From reports, poor surveillance leads to underreporting of COVID-19 associated outcomes and deaths. In Lagos, the epicenter of the pandemic in Nigeria, there is growing concern over poor adherence to the COVID-19 safety protocols, despite a lot of awareness campaigned by the government. Just information that the State Commissioner for Health, Professor Akin Abayomi, stresses the need for people to get vaccinated and desist from stigmatizing people that might contract the virus. So we have a large number of mutations in the virus that is changing it and causing us to identify that COVID has now changed into these different variants or strains. With the growing need to strengthen infectious disease surveillance mechanism in Africa, I had a chat with the Administrator Private Sector Coalition Against COVID-19, Kakovid, who spoke about interventions and efforts to boost international collaborations. Kakovid supported testing in the beginning last year. We uh, partnered with the UN Basket Fund to bring in vaccines to uh, testing supplies for Nigeria. So we did that. Um, right now, there's not really a testing challenge. It's more, let's make sure that the vaccines exactly are, as they're coming in, that they're ending up in people's arms. In a quest to know more about how public hospitals in the country are responding to the pandemic, my team and I visited the Lagos University Teaching Hospital in Yaba, Lagos. A chief infectious and community health expert spoke with us about their experience during the first and second waves. According to them, there was a time the B-wing was empty, but now the first floor is filled to capacity. This expert wants the public to adhere to COVID-19 guidelines as the new strain of the virus is six times more infectious. COVID-19 is real. It's not a hoax or a scam. Like some, people, some people still don't believe that it's real. This place was filled up from, you know, beginning, you know, down to the end. Uh, in the second wave, of course, because we, had, we changed our approach. We're only admitting people who are sick. Uh, we, again, from top to floor, was filled up and we also had to dedicate an ICU for management of those patients. Although the recorded cases may seem low, it's been forecasted that Africa will suffer the most effects of the virus after the pandemic is over. Simple procedures such as regular washing of hands, regular exercise, getting vaccinated, eating right are some of the things that can be done to curb the spread of the virus. Sharon Ijason, TVC News.